What's up everyone, my name is Mark Hawk and today we're taking the Sony X1000V 4K action camera and putting it up against the GoPro Hero 4 Silver Edition with the new 2.0 firmware. We're taking both of these guys to some local Los Angeles mountains and then going two hours north and hitting up Big Bear for some snow, ice, and fun. So, let's get out there. And you can use any of these quick links to jump to the section you're most interested in. And there's a lot of features to cover, so sit back and we'll start playing them all. Now, if any of this footage looks familiar and you've watched one of our other comparisons, it's because we're filming at four cameras at the same time to get more done. So, let's get to it. So, we're going to start off by taking a look at what each camera does best at 30 frames per second. Now, with the Hero 4 Silver, the max resolution you're going to get is 2.7K, and that's going to be at a bit rate of 45 megabits a second. Now, that's going to clock in around 331 megabytes per minute. And with the Sony X1000V, you're going to get 100 megabits a second at 676 megabytes per minute. Now you could drop that bit rate down to 60 if you wanted to, but why would you want to? You want the best quality possible. So taking a look at the Sony XK1000V at 4K, you're going to notice it's a very sharp image, there's a ton of detail here, and a beautiful range of colors. So we're crunching the blacks a little bit, and we're crunching the whites a little bit to have this very nice appealing image. There's a lot of detail we're seeing in the tree, from everything up close to the camera to far away, and it's a really beautiful picture. Now with the GoPro Hero 4 Silver, it might be hampered a little bit by the fact that it's filming on a 4x3 sensor. This is the conclusion I've come to on why a lot of our GoPro Hero shots were very washed out, especially when facing the sun. I think it's because the sun is hitting that sensor. But we have a much warmer plate here. Uh, the blacks and the whites aren't crunched so much, but it might be because it's trying to compensate for the sun hitting the lens. Now the Hero 4 Silver, again, is kind of a, a lower resolution image, and it is a little bit softer. If you look in the bushes on the bottom of the screen, you're not going to notice as much as the branches. It's going to seem a little muddy and soft, while the X1000V is super crisp. And again, you can see all the nice fog in the lower left on both of these, but the Sony X1000V just showing off a really nice image. Now if we zoom in here, you're going to notice that the Hero 4 Silver, again, does have that slight softer image. This is about 200%, with the Sony 4K actually only being at 100% since we don't really have to scale up, we're already at 4K. But again, a good range of detail, and there's just a ton to look at. It's really sharp. You can see all the lines and the trails in between the trees. It's awesome. While this section is really meant to deal with showing off how the Hero 4 Silver has a lot of field of view options and a lot of resolution options, and how Sony's X1000V has a severe lack of options between angles and field of view, it's also a good opportunity to take a look at the color that's being uh, sort of manipulated in each camera. So with the X1000V, you're going to notice a huge saturation bump, and you can really notice those whites and those blacks crunching. Again, the Hero 4 Silver is a little washed now, but the real color in real life is somewhere in between these. Like those rocks in the background, in reality, are much whiter. They're not anywhere near as yellow, and uh, my car is nowhere near as red or as washed out as it is on either of these images. Now the Hero 4 Silver, as we're going through these, you'll notice we have the 1440p mode, which is one of my preferred filming methods because you get more top and bottom space. So later on I can crop the image and move it up and down, that way I don't miss any of the action. It's one of my favorite things about the Hero line of cameras. And with the Hero 4 Silver, you can actually film that at 30 frames a second, I believe up to 48 frames a second if you wanted to eliminate some of the motion blur. While you have a bunch of field of view options with the Hero 4 Silver, there's only one real way to change the field of view on the X1000V, and that's to enable steady mode. Now, theoretically, this can actually lead to some image quality loss, and it can also lead to a drift in the image if it's locked off. Sometimes the steady shot will cause the camera to sort of drift left. And the Hero 4 Silver does have a fourth sort of field of view mode known as um, Super View, but it's actually not anywhere near as wide as Sony's default uh, wide view, so you can lead to some really bad lens distortion on the X1000V. We'll cover lens distortion a little more as we go throughout this video. Now the reason why we chose to film in the snow is because it's a very hard environment to film in. So you're either going to have this highly reflective material that sort of overexposes your camera or underexposes your camera. Because as the camera tries to compensate for the really reflective material, it might sort of expose all the way down. But if it goes the other way, it makes the snow way too bright and you don't see anybody skiing or snowboarding on top of it. So the camera has to find a really good in-between and sort of show you both the bright and the darks. Now you can see here what each camera is kind of doing, the Hero 4 Silver applying in sort of warmer tint, and the Sony X1000V applying in sort of cooler tint. Now I'll point out on the X1000V we have a lot of range here. Uh, the snow value looks great, the white balance looks great, the up-close focus looks really good, and you can see as things get kind of close to the lens, they're a little softer, but overall it's a really appealing image. Now with the GoPro Hero 4 Im uh, with the GoPro Hero 4 image here, it's a little softer, especially closer up to the camera, and it does feel a little uh, 
washed out. It feels a little flat. It does have that sort of warmer hint, uh, and you can see that really in the snow because it's sort of a yellowish color. But if we point the Hero 4 away from the sun, we do retain a lot of that contrast back. You can really see it in the trees, and just even in the snow up close, that the contrast values between the two cameras aren't too far off as they were before. However, the white balance on the Hero 4 is still a little off. You can tell because my jacket is actually closer to that blue color you see on the right than it is the sort of teal cyan on the left. It's again just adding that warmer tint and slightly changing the white balance, and as we zoom in here, you can kind of see the red in the clouds in the distance. On the Hero 4 Silver, like we have a lot of detail in there, but it does have that sort of red tint to it and slight green, and it kind of just changes the white balance up a little bit. The X1000V, if you look at the tree, the kind of to the left of my head, great attention to uh, to sharpness and the branches and stuff like that. We can see all the individual branches and whatnot. And again, that up close snow looks really good, but that sort of wide field of view I mentioned before, that lens distortion, look in the lower left and right, just see how much that snow curves and distorts. We don't really have that in the Hero 4. We have a sort of, it's really better about how it handles its 170 degree field of view without really overly distorting the image. And with the GoPro Hero Studio software later on, we can just do a one click button change and it will remove a lot of that distortion. Now coming up here, we're going to do a slight audio test um, since we are in an Offspring concert, but just keep some of those other things I said in mind as uh, we go to full screen in this next section. So we'll go a little deeper into the audio in just a little bit here, but uh, again we're throwing both of these cameras at a really difficult shot. We're pointing it at the sun, we're looking at the side of a very reflective mountain, but it's also a good opportunity to look how the Hero 4 Silver is sort of exposing things in the foreground, and how the Sony X1000V is exposing things in the background. Notice these people up front, notice how much darker they are on the Sony X1000V compared to the Hero 4 Silver. Like, it's again finding that good balance between the two very bright background and what's in the foreground, and this sort of contrast background balance has been a very difficult part with helmet cameras and action cameras over the last four or five years. It wasn't really until the Heroes 2 came around that like these balances started to find a good in-between. But again, when we are pointing towards the sun, the Hero 4 Silver has a tendency to just sort of flatten out. But in this scenario, we're seeing a lot more detail, especially if you look in that girl's plant pants. There's a, a lot of black levels in there, and we're just seeing all of those wrinkles. We lose a lot of those wrinkles in the X1000V. But if we do look in the snow in the background, we're do we are seeing a lot of more of, uh, of the trails and the sort of ski trails and stuff like that. And I thought this information maybe was sort of lost in the Hero 4 Silver, so when I turn the flat mode on, you can see a lot of that information, but the opposite happens with the X1000V when we enable its flat color mode. Now the flat color mode is basically used if you're going to do uh, color correction mainly in post-processing. That way you don't rely on each camera's individual color grade. It's supposed to give you a much wider range of information, and in this case it kind of hurts us with the x 1000 and be. Now this section is mainly to show sort of the lens distortion I was talking about before with the X1000V and sort of showcasing where it's kind of a problem and where it doesn't actually affect us too much. But notice me on the side of the camera here as I walk in and out, you'll notice I kind of get an ovalish head and I kind of stretch and stuff like that. You notice this a lot on these sort of shots when you're panning left and right. You just see everything stretch and distort and again like when we're tilting up and down um, not so much when we're going up and down, but tilting the camera forward and upwards, a lot of those tripod shots. And I thought that would be really disorienting, but when I'm doing these shots where I'm like going down the hill on the snowboard, that distortion doesn't bother me at all, so it's, it's about working within those limitations and kind of knowing what to look out for. Speaking of dealing with limitations, we're going to move on to something that affects a lot of us and ruins a lot of really good shots, and that's sort of handheld shakiness. And the X1000V has a built-in stabilizer using an accelerometer and some sort of algorithm. It actually helps stabilize your footage um, at the expense of sort of losing some field of view. But um, it's also going to remove a lot of that lens distortion in the process and it's going to give us a nice smoother image. Now when we're doing just sort of nice dolly shots like this, you can notice on the, on the Hero 4 on the left side of your screen that it's still slightly shaky, but the X1000V on the right has a nice smooth pan. Now, in theory, we are losing a little bit of quality, but we are gaining this nice smooth shot and it's much more appealing. The only real downside in this is we'll see some sort of warping in the corners, but it's not really there unless you're looking for it. 
Now, uh, the big thing with Steady Shot 2.0 is it eliminates or it greatly reduces the amount of micro vibrations you get. And what micro vibrations are are those sort of small, fast shakings. So you'll notice on the Hero 4 Silver, you know, we're kind of bouncing around and stuff like that, but the X1000V is reducing a lot of that. Now, it's not going to do any magic like this big bump here. It's not going to get rid of that, but it's going to greatly reduce it about 70%. So you can kind of see here on the right, we're just sort of cruising, everything's staying smooth. Hero 4 Silver is moving all over the place. And the Hero 4 Silver doesn't have anything really to get rid of uh, shakiness within its GoPro Studio software or within the camera. So it's a big advantage uh, with the X1000V if you don't want to do any sort of post-production later on to remove that shakiness. Now we're filming both cameras, filming at 60 frames a second. The reason why we do this is it helps eliminate motion blur. And when we have those sort of micro vibration situations, a lot of the motion blur can get baked into your footage. So if you try and stabilize it later, even though your footage will be stable, you'll still have that motion blur in there and you'll see like weird streaks and sort of flickers happen in your image. This will help avoid a lot of this. And the higher frame rate you go, the easier it is to remove motion blur. So something to keep in mind if you plan on doing your image stabilization in post-production. So both of these cameras have a wide array of options when it comes to filming slow motion. And the way this is, is controlled is by your frames per second. So with the X1000V at 1080p, we can go up to 120 frames per second. And if we drop it down to 720p, we can actually get 240 frames per second. The only real limitation is you have to use the action camera software in order to re-export out the footage. Otherwise, it can't really be imported into Premiere Pro. We kind of go into this in our quick looks part one and two, if you want to check that out. And we go over the fix in part two of the AS200. Now the Hero 4 Silver can only do 120 frames per second at 720p, and at 1080p the fastest it can go is 60 frames per second. Both of these will lose a little bit of quality in the process since we are using a lower resolution and a lower bitrate to, to achieve it, but with the Hero 4 Silver we do have the ability to keep ProTune on, which should actually give us the max bitrate we can, and with the X1000V I'm still noticing a really beautiful picture. You know, when we came here they told us, they told us we could only play for 30 minutes today. I know, I know. I like, I changed my guitar strings, I did all kinds of stuff, and they're saying, I think we just about hit 30 minutes right now. What should we do? I'm good with 30. No, I say fuck it. We're going to play a few more, man. Alright, uh, the GoPros are both filming in super view mode for the GoPro Hero 4 Silver, that's 1080p. Super mode, 30 frames a second. For the black, that's 2.7K super, 30 frames. Uh, both in their GoPro color grade, and the Sonys are at their default, same as before, so 4K or 1080 in their color mode and their default uh, lens width. So the big takeaway from both of these audio tests is the Hero 4 Silver does have a good range of picking up sounds all around it. Whenever you're filming, it has a more mono sound, but if, uh, if you're trying to get in environments, the Hero 4 Silver definitely picks up on everything around you fairly well. The X1000V seems to deal better when things are directed towards the camera. So if you're playing a guitar and you have the camera faced right at the guitar, beautiful sound then compared to the Hero 4. However, if you're in a big crowd or an environment where you need to get the reaction sounds around you, the Hero 4 Silver is, does a really good job of picking up that audio around you. Uh, I've noticed in some other tests that the X1000V just has a beautiful dynamic range, but the Hero 4 Silver is nothing to really um, raise an eyebrow to. It's, it's really good. So now we're going back to 30 frames per second, what looks best at it, and uh, we have everything at the max bit rate again, so with the X1000V that's 100 megabits, and with the Hero 4 Silver that's going to be 45 megabits. Now we're here in downtown LA, and we're kind of getting into that golden hour look. This is really where the Hero 4 color profile shines. Uh, you can see like with the much warmer profile we have some really nice greens and stuff like that, but what we really want to be looking at here is again that sharpness, that clarity, things we were mentioning earlier. So the skyline in the background, for example, is going to be kind of important here. 
With the X1000B, that skyline's gonna pop up, it's gonna be nice and sharp, and again, it's the benefit of having the higher bitrate and the higher resolution, of course, but it, that lens is dialed in to deal with those depths a lot better. It's not just a resolution and spec sheet thing. The hardware on the X1000B is performing really well, um, but, you know, Again, it's, it's like looking at these, these sharpness and those, this lens distortion in the X1000V is pretty extreme. To even remove this in post-production, we're going to lose a lot of this frame. If you're looking at, like, if you split this into fives, like, you're going to lose, like, one, one fifth on each end. While the Hero 4, to undistort this, you're not going to need to do a lot to undistort it. And again, we're in this golden era where the Hero 4 uh, color grade looks really, really nice. We do have a lot of details in the clouds, but we do, you know, we do still have that softer image. So we're getting a lot of nice blooming in that sun and stuff like that. Um, here we're taking a look really at sort of the um, sort of the the chipped paint and stuff like that, and we're taking a look at as we go into low light how the camera reacts. Now both of these uh, shots aren't synced; they were actually meant for recording one minute segments, so I knew the exact size of each file for the beginning segment. But again, just like look at all the details, look at the difference in color profiles as we move into lower light. You can definitely see the Hero 4 silver has that warmer tint. Uh, the X1000V has this weird sort of blue tint to it, but, you know, I know a lot of you guys kind of prefer the blue tint, and some people prefer the warmer tint. Uh, color profile is a really subjective thing. Like here, on both of these cameras, both of these images, to me, look great. The only real downside in the X1000V is it's really blooming out the sky a lot. Like, if I wanted to do any post-color correction, I really have no information for that upper left zone. But the Hero 4 Silver definitely has that information there. But there's a really good range of blacks here. They're both compensating for that bright left area pretty well. Uh, the Hero 4 Silver definitely has more information in the clouds, but if we're looking at things like the rocks, um, you can really notice right off the bat the X1000V is just a much sharper image. Just look at that water detail compared to the Hero 4 Silver. Um, again, it's just, you know, maybe these cameras aren't on level playing ground, but for $100 more, this is what you get with the X1000V. So the Hero 4, Sil uh, Hero 4 Silver retails for around $399, and the X1000V retails for around $499. So it's really just showing the differences as well as, like, what your money gets you. With the Hero 4 Silver, you're actually getting a lot more, you know, video resolution options like we were talking about before, and we're going to go over some photography stuff in a little bit that makes it seem like a much more appealing image. And then there's also the OLED screen on the back of the camera, which is super helpful, and it makes it really fun to film, especially in low light conditions, because you never had to pull out your cell phone to change the settings, and that's one thing I constantly had to do with the X1000V. But if you're using it with a cell phone and you're connecting to Wi-Fi, both of those give you the option to change the settings with light on. As we do move into low light, we're going to switch these cameras down to 24 frames per second. And the reason why we're doing this is because this allows us to get the most light per shutter speed. So with the Hero 4 Silver, we're filming with the ISO turned down to 1600. And that's really to keep our black levels in check and our grain not out of control. The Sony X1000V doesn't really have any color options that are going to really help us in low light, but there are some more options this time around in the X1000V. I can't recall them off the top of my head, but I think there's some white balance issue, uh, not issues, uh, options, and there's some exposure options, but uh, I'll try and list some of that in the more information section below this video. But without changing any settings, you know, we're getting a really nice image off the X1000V, and we have that nice blue tint, which helps us. Now with the Hero 4 Silver, we're going to bump it up to 6400 ISO. This is the default ISO that we normally have. My problem with it is it introduces a ton of grain because the ISO is basically your your uh, your grain control and when we bump that up it's to artificially brighten the image but we're also going to bring with it a bunch more grain. So it's a less appealing image and especially when you have that red tint you're going to notice when we go back to the side by side here uh, all those dark areas are extremely red and it kind of looks like we're shining a red light or maybe like the, a red light is reflecting into it but this is just naturally how it appears with the the 6400 ISO. Now if we're in an environment such as a city that has a lot more sort of natural light in the area both of these um, cameras actually perform pretty well in low light. The X1000V obviously has a lot more range. Just look in the upper left you're going to see a lot more detail in the parking structure and stuff like that and there's just a lot more information in the trees and those those buildings in sort of the mid right screen you can notice on the black and the hero 4 silver we have a red tint and with the x1000v we slightly have a blue tint but uh, maybe maybe one of the areas you want to focus in is if you want to use this as a dash cam is how information is projected near light sources so if you're hoping to catch a license plate and stuff like that a lot of these areas still bloom and stuff like that but you're definitely going to get more detailed information out of the X1000V. Now, if you are using this as a dash cam or a security cam, I suggest actually filming at 30 frames per second, because when you have this in motion, you want to avoid as much motion blur as possible. And it'll only get a little darker the faster in frames per second we go, but I would not go to 60 frames
frames per second at night because you're going to lose a lot of that light. And the nice thing about both of these cameras is when you're filming indoors and there's no natural sunlight, they both give you a really nice image. And again, we're bumping up the Hero 4 here up to 6400. We don't really have any ISO, uh, ISO controls in the X1000V, only maybe exposure control. I don't think that would help us too much because it's just artificially brightening up the image and we could do that later. Now the one area both of these cameras handle very differently is time lapse, and I'm going to start with the X1000B because this is supposed to be their premium camera, yet when I do a time lapse, I cannot choose to film anything but uh, basically video stills, these 1920 low res stills, while the Hero 4 Silver will give me these giant 12 megapixel lens, I'm sorry, 12 megapixel photos at their 4000 by 3000 resolution. Now this X1000V image looks really nice and the idea is that the camera will actually build the time lapse for us using the app or the camera itself, I can't recall at the top of my head, but it's somewhere in the manual and we'll bring it up later. The Hero 4 Silver is using the uncompressed uh, images and we actually have the ability to take somewhat raw photos, basically uncolor corrected photos, we have all the protein options, and we have the full range of the 12 megapixel lens as opposed to the X1000V restricting us from using their beautiful 8.8 .8 megapixel lens, because both of these images look great, uh, both of these cameras still images look great, but you know, without that full range it kind of sucks, but you can see a lot of detail in the X1000V even without the timeline, I'm sorry, even without the, the full graded quality. Now here we're looking at Sony's X1000V using the full 8.8 .8 megapixel lens. It's got uh, a wide variety of resolution options, but the big takeaway is it films at 16x9 images, while the Hero 4 Silver films at 4x3 images. So with the Hero 4 you get a little top and bottom information more, like you see here, and with the X1000V, like we're filming in video, we get a more, little more left and right um, field of view. The one big advantage with the Hero 4 Silver is we have a lot more control. So we can tell our shutter speed to slow down, and this is very useful in nighttime situations. So we can have an exposure shot uh, that's open for 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 2 seconds, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, and we can take pitch black environments and just keep brightening up the image. And there's a lot of cool photography tricks like this. So you can just point this at a pitch black sky at night and get a beautiful sort of star uh, range and stuff like that. Uh, the Sony X1000V doesn't have any controls like this. That's not to say it doesn't do a really good job of taking night photos, but the Hero 4 Silver just sort of knocks it out of the park with these options, and with the OLED screen on the back, you don't have to rely on your phone always just to take these shots. However, using a remote with either of these cameras, especially when you're doing sort of nighttime photography, is the benefit is you don't shake the camera around. Now both of these images right here are taken in complete darkness, and the cameras are auto-exposing just to get the best image, so we're not even changing the shutter speed here to get these beautiful images. And again, you can see sort of the field of view options that we have on both of these. Anyway, that's going to wrap up our comparison of these two cameras for now, but there's still a ton more to cover, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any videos. Also, be sure to check me out on Instagram or Twitter if you want to see what we're up to next. Uh, we're going to have a ton more content coming up soon. And also, if you guys are feeling generous, hop on over to my Patreon page. We're going to be throwing up a video soon. Um, but yeah, it's just mainly to get more content because all of Markov Cam is run out of pocket. Very rarely do we get sent stuff. so. The more you continue to support me, the more videos I can make for you guys. So, I'm Mark Cam, and I'll see you guys out there. Have a good one.